Welcome to another A-Level Maths Revision video. Today we're taking a look at a very important topic. It leads to some quite tricky uh, material in the second year, which is proof by contradiction. So this is kind of the start of it, methods of proof. So in this here, we're going to introduce proof by exhaustion um, as kind of the main uh, concept here. But we'll see some other examples, kind of, um, you know, these kind of typical exam style questions. So let's take a look at this question here. These questions are usually quite short, so there's not too much work going on, um, so it shouldn't be too long of a video. <clears throat> so, a student trying to prove that x cubed plus y cubed is less than x plus y all cubed. So, the student writes this. We've just got to find the error in the proof. So, let's see if we can do that. I'm losing my voice apparently, so let's see if we can make it through the full video. So, question 6a. So if we kind of look at the proof they've worked through, so all they've done to start with is just expanded x plus y cubed. Um, you can do that using binomial expansion um, or just doing it by hand. So far that's all, that's all okay, the expansion's fine. Now they say this is less than x cubed plus y cubed since what they're saying here is 3x squared y plus 3xy squared is greater than zero. But there's a bit of an issue with this statement. Um, and we don't necessarily know if that's actually true. Um, so essentially, the error lies in the last line. So the error is in the last line. And why is that the case? Well, like we said here, we don't necessarily know whether that is greater than zero. There's been no proof of the actual fact. So essentially, there's no guarantee. no guarantee that this line is greater than zero. Okay, obviously this would depend on the value of y for example, because um, 3 times x squared, so that will always be positive, but it depends on what y is for example, okay. Um, if y is negative here, that will be negative, depending on what this is, then this expression might actually be negative. So there's no guarantee there, so that's kind of one issue we have there. And then part b, we've just got to provide a counter example to show that it's not true. So we're disproving this now. So, um, just think of one example essentially, that's all you need to do, to find one example. So one example, to show it doesn't work. Okay, so what could we pick here? Well, the easiest one I think to pick out here is just x equals 0 and y equals 0. Because what we actually get then is if x equals 0 and y equals 0, we get 0 cubed plus 0 cubed is apparently less than 0 plus 0 all cubed. But essentially, 0 cubed is just 0, so this is 0 on this left hand side, is apparently less than 0 cubed, which is just 0. So this isn't correct. Okay, so 0 is not less than itself. Um, these are actually equal, so therefore, not true. Okay. So just finding one example there, just to show it doesn't work. So like you can see, quite a short question, um, hopefully nothing too challenging. So let's take a look at this one now. Um, there's a bit more work involved with this one. Um, again, only two marks for it still, but definitely a bit trickier than the last one that we've just seen. So we've got to basically prove that a plus 1 over a is greater than or equal to 2. So how can we tackle a question like this? The big clue is in the fact that we're told a is a positive real number. Now they give you this as a little hint up here in the top right. You won't get this in your exam, this hint, but you will be told this condition here if it's necessary that A is a positive real number. And they don't just tell you that for fun, it is kind of important, and the reason for that is because what we're going to do now is we're going to times through by A, and we can do that because we know A is positive. For example, if A is negative, if we times through, then we'd have to flip the inequality, remember? Um, you, you know, you factor about inequalities here. So, because of that fact, we know A is always positive, then the inequality will always remain in this state. So, tangent through by a, that gives us a squared plus 1 is greater than or equal to 2a. 
Okay. And then at this stage here, we just need to get this in terms of you know being greater than or equal to zero, and then just solve from there. So a squared minus two a plus one is greater than or equal to zero. So how is this always greater than or equal to zero? Well, if something's always greater than or equal to zero, what we'd expect is that it's at least equal to zero or bigger, right? That's essentially what this statement says. So let's see if we can try and factorize this and get it into just one squared expression. Because if it's just one squared expression, no matter what you get for that expression, if you square it, it'll always be positive or zero, essentially. So can we factorize this? Of course we can, right? This becomes a minus one times a minus one again. Perfect. Expand that, you get this. And this is greater than or equal to zero. This now we can just write as just one term to the power of two, like so. And this is greater than or equal to zero. And because this is one expression squared here, what it means is at the very least it will be equal to zero. So this is always zero or greater. So this expression is always zero or greater and hence it satisfies the, in the inequality and it gives us a proof there. So therefore proof complete or a nicer way of saying that would be a QED. Okay. Job done essentially. Uh, so that's that one done there. The next one here so this is now where we kind of come on to this idea of proof by exhaustion. A um, bit of a tricky one. Um, you kind of got to think about this conceptually. So the first part, we're just trying to disprove it. Then the part B here, this is where the proof by exhaustion comes in. So let's just tackle the, the first bit um, here now. So what we've got to show here is that this inequality is false. Because what they're saying that is always true, we can prove that it isn't. So a squared plus b squared is less than a plus b all squared. So like you see, very, very similar to the first one we did. Now, with it being exact, well, not exactly, but very, very close to the first one, again, I'm just going to pick a and b equals zero. Okay, if a equals zero and b equals zero, it's the exact same argument, um, but instead of it being cubed, it's squared. Oops, that should be less than. Essentially, this side here is zero, this side's zero, and zero isn't less than zero, it's equal. So, therefore, um, the claim is false. Okay. So, there we go. Now, for part B, we have to specify conditions on A and B that make this inequality true. So how would we do this? So this is definitely where the trickiest part of this question comes in. What I try and do is I try and think about the actual inequality that we've got at hand. So we've got a squared plus b squared is less than a plus b squared. Now what can we actually do with this inequality? Truthfully, not a massive amount. The only thing we can actually do would be just to expand this right hand side. So let's try and do that and see what we get. So that's less than, so this would just be a squared plus 2ab plus b squared. Okay. So that's just this, This is, that's just this here expanded to give us this. So the only difference between the left hand side of the inequality and the right hand side is this 2ab here. That's the defining kind of element here. So all we need to do is consider now essentially the conditions on A and B. So consider conditions on A and B. On A and B. So what do I mean by that? Well, for example, let's just say A and, and B are both positive. So A is greater than zero, B is greater than zero. Well, what would that mean? Well, a squared, positive, b squared will always be positive. This 2ab here, so a positive number times another positive number will be positive, and then if you times it by 2, which is positive, that will always be positive. So in that sense then, 
So what that gives us is that 2AB is greater than zero. It's positive. So what that means then, what it implies is that A squared plus B squared will be less than this side, right? Because this 2AB means it's positive. So you're adding something onto A squared and B squared. So it's always got to be bigger than A squared plus B squared. Okay, so that means A squared plus B squared is less than A plus B all squared. Okay, so now we've got to essentially go through the other cases. So when both of them are negative, when A would be positive, when B would be negative, and then when A would be negative and B would be positive. So let's see if we can fit them all on in one here. So if we say they're both negative, so A is uh, less than zero, B is less than zero, what would happen with 2AB again? Well, A is negative, B is negative, but if you time them together, they have to be positive, and then another positive number times with it would give you a positive result. So 2AB is greater than zero, and in essence, we just repeat the same result here. Because this is positive, it means um, the right-hand side of the inequality is bigger. So A squared plus B squared is less than A plus B squared. Okay, now let's consider when A is greater than zero and then when B is less than zero. So what would we get here? So that would be A times B, so a positive times a negative will be negative and then times it by two, it's going to be less than zero this time. So 2AB is less than zero and then if that's the case, that means we're subtracting a number from A squared plus B squared um, which means this right hand side will be smaller than a squared plus b squared or in other words a squared plus b squared is larger than my right hand side like so okay and now we just got one more condition to consider and that one would be um, a is negative and b is positive so if we just do that right at the top here You might have already kind of spotted what's going to happen here. It's going to repeat this same result because it's a positive times a negative. We get 2AB less than zero, which means A squared plus B squared is larger than A plus B all squared. Okay, so what conditions mean the, the inequality holds? Well, as we can see, the inequality holds so the inequality holds when basically they're either both positive or both negative. And there we have it. So that's essentially a proof by exhaustion because we've got the four conditions that we can have. We've exhausted each one. Okay, so that's your final answer up here. And now we move on to the final question. This time we have another proof by exhaustion. Now for the last one, they didn't tell you to use proof by exhaustion. That's something you kind of have to figure out yourself. You have to deduce yourself. This time we're told it, you know, just use proof by exhaustion. So let's have a go at this. So question nine. So we want to use proof by exhaustion to prove that for all prime numbers P, but we're restricting P to be between three and 20, that P squared is one greater than a multiple of 24. Well, all we need to do here, essentially, is just write down the possible values that P could be, and then just show it's true for each one. Okay, so let's just write down the set P here. Um, so essentially just the prime numbers between 3 and 20. Um, so what can we have? We can have uh, 5, 7, uh, 11, 13, 17, and 19. Okay, so them are the possible values for P. So all we need to do now is show that each one, so five, um, you square five is one greater than a multiple of 24. Do the same for seven, 11, 13, so on and so on. So what I'll do is I'll try and do it methodically. So P equals five. So P squared is five times five, so 25, which is equal to 24 plus one, okay? Which is one greater than a multiple of 24. So it works for that one. So what we'll do is we'll just give it a tick as we're going along if it works. 
p equals 7. So that's p squared equals 7 times 7, 49. And as you can see, this would be 48 plus 1. And 48 plus 1 is 2 lots of 24 plus the 1. Okay, so we need to kind of show it in this note with this notation here that would you know it's a multiple of 24. So that one's true. P equals 11. So square it. We get 121. We can write that as 5 lots of 24. 120 plus the 1. Give it a tick, it works again. Um, I mean, we should expect that it works for all one, given that we're asked to actually prove it. If it didn't work, then we wouldn't be asked to prove it. So, p squared, 169, and that's 7 lots of 24, plus the 1. Just two more now, p equals 17. p squared would be um, 289, and that's equal to 12 lots of 24, plus the 1. And then finally, just one more, p equals 19. So p squared is 361, and that's equal to 15 lots of 24, plus the 1. So again, that works. So therefore, we've proven it by exhaustion. It works for all possible values that we've got in p. Therefore, true. Using proof by exhaustion. So like it says, it, it is quite literally exhausting because um, some of these questions can be quite long. Um, but that one weren't too bad. So that's part A done. And then part B, we just want to find a counter example that disproves the statement here that all numbers, which are 1 greater than a multiple of 24, are the squares of prime numbers. So again, just find one example where this doesn't work. Um, so obviously it's clearly not going to work for any of the ones we've just written down. So a bit of common sense here. Don't try it with any of these. Um, but for example, if I just pick the, the kind of the first obvious one here, which is p equals 3. Um, so for example, 3 times 24. And then add the 1. What does that give us? That gives us 73. So it, it doesn't work, right? It doesn't work when we use p equals 3, for example. So you know, it's nothing, nothing intensive, just find one example where it doesn't work. Um, you know, there'll be plenty of others that you can find. Um, and that'll be true for all the others in there where we just, you know, find one kind of example. There'll be lots of different answers that you can give. Um, you know, so as long as you've got the one, move on, don't waste any more time. But anyway, that brings us to the end of this one. I hope it's helped. Um, if there is any possible mistakes anywhere, um, please just let me know down below.